some people that are tuning in now. I'm Sam from Edisto Beach State Park and we're at the Environmental Learning Center. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our turtles here, our resident turtles, um, and then at the end I'll touch a little bit about our sea turtles. Um, so we'll get started. Let me go find our turtle. So our first one, um, this is Turnip. She is a Diamondback Terrapin. As you can see, she is a very strong swimmer um, and her back legs are webbed. So she spends most of her life out in the water um, and Diamondback Terrapins are believed to be the only species that lives in brackish water. So they're commonly found in estuaries, tidal creeks, um, even uh, mangroves get further south in Florida. Um, they have an unhinged shell, so that means that they don't ha they're not able to pull their full body in. Um, but with all turtles, the shell is their skeleton. So right here, um, this is her spinal cord, and it's her entire rib cage. Um, all of her internal organs are in here, um, so this helps protect her in a sense. Um, they can live 50 to 60 years, um, give or take, I mean, depending on if it's in captivity or in the wild. Um, she is about 28 years old, so she's just as old as I am. Um, and those tuning in, uh, we are at Edisto Beach State Park at the Environmental Learning Center. And this is ter Turnip, our Diamondback Terrapin. Um, she's not too happy that I'm holding her. Um, she's swimming in the air. Uh, you can see that her shell is pretty streamlined. Um, that's because she's made for swimming. And then her head um, is pretty, pretty muscular. So she has a muscular jaw. She loves eating fiddler crabs, other mollusks, periwinkle snails. And you can see it almost looks like she has a mustache. So if she were to bite me, it would be very painful. Um, so I'm gonna put her down before she gets a little feisty um, and let her roam. Does anybody have questions so far on Diamondback Terrapins? I'm gonna go find Rudy. I don't know where he went. Mm -hmm. It's like hiding and seek with a turtle. <laughs> is our other Diamondback Terrapin. Um, I'm gonna carefully hold him because his claws are super, super long and they can hurt a lot. Um, and I'm calling him a he because males are typically smaller than females. So Turnip, she is a full grown female. Um, and we've had Rudy here for about four years. And this is hope most likely the max size for him. Um, and you can see that he looks much different than turnip. Um, with diamondback terrapins, their pattern is very variable. Um, so it's kind of like me and you are different. Um, so each terrapin will look different. If anybody tuned in to Megan a couple weeks ago, Buddy is much lighter and has a much vivid pattern on her shell. So that just shows you the variation. They are, um, a vulnerable species and that's what that means is their populations are declining and um, <coughs> excuse me oh thanks Ruby <laughs> um, he's a little camera shy so with declining populations usually that's um, because of us unfortunately um, females will cross the road to look for mates and nesting and they'll get hit by cars. So if you are driving and you see a turtle and you can do it safely, please help them across the road so they don't get injured. Um, Cause I, like I said earlier, the shell is their skeletal system and their, all of their organs are in here. Um, so if they get hit by a car, it could be fatal. And in the 1900s, they were harvested for their meat so they were used to make turtle soup. Not sure why anybody would eat turtle soup, but they did. Um, so that's another um, reason for their decline. And habitat destruction. I'm gonna have to clean 
that up. <laughs> um, habitat destruction is another one. So everybody loves the coast. They love living on the coast and having businesses here. So a lot of their habitat has been destroyed. So we have to try and protect them as much as we can. Um, a few things that you guys can do would be um, try not to leave your trash behind, um, decrease the amount of polluted, pollutants that are in the water, um, and then if you see them crossing the road, just help they bring them to the other side. Um, they, these guys, um, we feed them a little bit of shrimp, um, but that's not their entire, um, that's kind of like a candy bar for them, so it's kind of a little treat. Um, we give them Reptamin, which is a turtle um, vitamin, and then we feed them fish and fiddler crabs. They love fiddler crabs. Um, we'll actually put them on the floor and they'll chase them around. I don't have any, to, any today or else I would do that. Um, but before we go on, are there any questions about diamondback terrapins? Well, yes, right now we have a viewer that's wondering what's the difference between a turtle and a terrapin. A terrapin is a turtle that lives in brackish water, but it's still a turtle. A turtle is either like a terrestrial or um, freshwater. And then you have your tortoise, which is land. Um, but those would be the, terrapin is just a fancy name for like a brackish water turtle. We also have another question of people are asking what time do we do our videos usually for the South Carolina State Parks? Um, usually they're at 10, um, but we've done some at 11. The day before, uh, there'll be a posting letting people know. Um, so just tune into the Facebook page and um, be on the lookout for other videos. All right. Since he is right here, and I don't know where the other turtle is, I'm gonna have to go look for it. Um, this one is a Eastern Mud Turtle. And those of you tuning in, I am Sam at Edisto Beach State Park. And this is our mud turtle that lives here at the Environmental Learning Center. He kind of looks like a snapping turtle. Um, so I'm gonna be a little bit short on holding him because I really don't want him to bite me. Um, but as you can see, his shell is pretty nondescript, kind of brown, not really anything too exciting. Um, that is perfect camouflage for him when he's in his habitat. So he is semi-aquatic, um, but he lives near freshwater, um, ponds, even temporary wetlands. Uh, and then he has two hinges, so he has one here, and he has one here. Um, he's pretty chubby, so he can't fully bring his, himself into that shell. But if he were, weren't so chubby, he'd be able to complete, completely seal himself off. And that's perfect protection for him. Um, they are an indicator species in their habitat. Actually, all turtles are an indicator species. So what that means is if this turtle is present in a temporary wetlands or a freshwater pond, that means that that wetlands is healthy. Um, they're mid-level consumers, so they just kind of keep everything in check. Um, so if you were to stumble upon this guy, um, that means that te that temporary wetlands is pretty healthy. But you can see how long his neck is. So I really don't want him to bite me. So I'm gonna put him down because <laughs> he is not very nice. Um, that is max size for a mud turtle. In the wild, they might get a little bit bigger and that's for all of our turtles here. We, um, in captivity, that tends to stunt the growth of a turtle. So in the wild, they'd be a little bit bigger with unlimited space and resources. All turtles in the winter, they will hibernate, so they're not active at all. Um, sometimes this guy really just, he'll stay in the same exact spot. Um, he's, the last time I had him out, he was pretty active. Um, he would eat 
Um, he's an omnivore, so he would eat a variety of things. Um, they're pretty opp opportunistic, so they're not picky. Uh, they'll eat uh, crayfish, worms, um, aquatic larvae, uh, tadpoles. They'll pretty much eat anything. Uh, we feed him mealworms. Occasionally, we'll try a fish, but he's not too keen on that. But he really likes mealworms. And we have a mealworm farm here, so that's what we feed him, and he's pretty happy. Um, let's see. Any questions on mud turtles? Or we have a question. Someone is wondering how long can they breathe underwater? Um, so they cannot breathe underwater. Um, they can hold their breath for a really long time. So terrapins, wherever they are, <laughs> um, they will kind of slow their metabolism and almost shut their body down and they live underwater when they're hibernating. So they can hold their breath for hours. In a high stress situation, it's much less. But with terrapins, one of the main things with them, they, turtles across the board are not very smart. Uh, they're purely instinct. So when they're swimming along and there's like a crab trap or a crab pot, and they see uh, free food pretty much because you put shrimp or chicken or anything in your crab pot. So they go into the crab trap and they eat the food, but then they're stuck in the tra crab trap. So they realize before it's too late um, that they, they're stuck in there and they, they end up drowning. Um, so that's one of the, the components of the diamondback terrapin de decline. Um, but there is RD, it's a bycatch reduction device, and that allows crabs to go into the crab trap, but it does, it prevents um, terrapins from going in there. So that kind of minimizes the, the, the deaths or the drownings of the diamondback terrapin. We have another question. Um, we have a viewer wondering how hard do some of these turtles bite? Um, their bite isn't that significant if you compare it to like an alligator. Um, but compared in our center, our alligator, our turtles, our snakes, um, they probably bite the hardest. It would be, I don't know the exact number, but it would be, um, a little bit stronger than like a puppy or a kitten. So. And we also have a question, if you find a turtle, should you try and put it in the water? And if so, is there a right way and a wrong way in going about that? Um, depending on the species. So what you can do if you're local um, or if you live in South Carolina, um, or even if you don't, you can call your local, um, like me, your interpreter, your nature center, and describe the turtle. Um, because like a box turtle, which is next, I don't know where he went, but um, he is a land turtle. You do not want to put him in the water. Um, typically, if they have webbed feet, you can put them in the water. Um, but if, you're, if it's just crossing the road, what you could do if it's going in this direction, you could just pick it up and bring it over to the other side. So don't necessarily, because um, diamondback terrapins, they can live in brackish water, they can live in salt water, they have salt glands. Whereas yellow-bellied sliders, those are fresh water, they don't have salt glands. So you don't want to put a yellow-bellied slider into a salt marsh. And a couple other questions. Mm -hmm. um, people are wondering how big can the turtle get and then also how long does that particular turtle live? The mud turtle? Yes. Okay. Um, mud turtles, that is pretty much max size. I'll get them again. Um, in the wild, they might get a little bit bigger. And he can live anywhere from 40 to 50 years. Um, but that could be less or more depending on if it's in captivity or if it's in the wild. So there's his cute little face. <laughs> He's a little shy. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. 
I don't know how old he is. Um, we got him at this size, so we don't really, I'm not sure. And you can't count the rings. That's kind of a, another thing that you could do. Um, and I'm calling him a he um, because his plastron um, is concave. So it goes in and his tail is pretty long. He doesn't like that I'm doing that. I'm sorry. And that's one of the characteristics between male and female. Males have um, the bottom of their shell will be concave and that helps with mating and their tail is typically like thicker or longer. And that also aids in mating. <laughs> I'm gonna go um, next up. Oh, getting pretty far. Next up is our box turtle. This is an eastern box turtle. They're pretty common um, up and down the coast. And you can see that his body and his legs are much, much different compared to the other turtles. He has more of a dome shape and his skin is more scaly. So box turtles are gonna be more similar to tortoises. And they can live pretty long as well. Um, so average is maybe 30, 40 years, but there's records of box turtles living upwards to 100. So if anybody wants a turtle as a pet, <laughs> just be prepared for at least 20 to 30 years plus. So the Diamondback Terrapins have no hinges on the bottom. Mud turtles have two hinges, and then the box turtle has one hinge right here. So he'll, he's able to pull his entire body into a shell if he feels threatened. Um, clearly he is not camera shy. Um, so he'll be able to pull his entire body in for protection. And like I said, this shell is their entire skeletal system. It's pretty hard. Um, so once he's completely secure inside his shell, he's really not gonna have much predation. Um, as little um, hatchlings, a lot of things will eat them. Um, but other than that, as an adult, really, there's not gonna be a lot of predation. Um, as juveniles, they are primarily carnivores. And then when they go grow up as adults, they'll be um, omnivores. So he'll, but it's more so like plants and berries, uh, mushrooms. We'll feed him worms too, so he gets a little protein, but we feed him uh, two salads a week. So we do lettuce, tomatoes, berries, and like I said earlier, with the Diamondback Terrapins, they are very varied in color. So same thing with the box turtle. So he is pretty yellowish orange um, where there's gonna be some variation. Some might be darker, some might be brighter than others. And I don't know if you could zoom or kind of show. So his, the bottom of his shell is plashed, it's concave, and then his eyes are red. Um, so those are two characteristics of a box turtle to know that it's male. A female will have a flat plaster on. All right. We got a question that's come in. Does it hurt a turtle to be upside down? Mm, it's probably unpleasant. Um, but it doesn't necessarily hurt them. They're able, their necks are long enough that they could flip themselves over. Another question has come in. What age can turtles begin to lay eggs? Um, that varies depending on the turtle species. So like sea turtles, it's about 30 um, is sexual maturity. These guys, it's a little bit younger. Um, they might be, I think it's maybe seven or eight. Um, the mud turtle, again, varies. And then same thing with diamondback terrapins. All right. We need to track the other ones down. Looks like okay. they're... Yeah. 
we did have a previous question. Um, do, do we have any idea of how fast they can go um, with some of these? The box turtle is pretty slow. Um, and then the mud turtle and the diamondback terrapin, especially if food is involved or they feel like they're threatened, they can move pretty fast. The diamondback terrapin is much more, um, what's the word? They swim faster um, rather than on land. But as far as exact speed, I'm not too sure. And could you explain one more time how you can tell male from female? It depends on the species. Um, so with mud turtles and box turtles, the bottom of their shell is concave. So it's not flat. It kind of caves in. And then I'll show you. It kind of caves in. Um, the diamondback terrapins, the female will be larger than the male. So she is much bigger than Rudy, um, wherever he is. Um, a female diamondback terrapin will be a little bit larger in the wild. Uh, she's been with us her entire life, so she's a little stunted. But males are typically smaller. Sometimes the tail can be longer. Um, sometimes, depending on the species, sometimes the claws will be longer. Um, I think yellow-bellied sliders the males will have really long claws and they'll kind of woo the female with their long claws. We've had a question come in. How many species of turtles are there? That, I don't know that one off the top of my head. Um, there's a lot uh, from land turtles, tortoises, um, the diamondback terrapins, they have seven subspecies up and down the coast. Box turtles, they have quite a few different species. And then there's um, seven species of sea turtle. So um, I don't know the exact number. I can um, answer that once I look it up. Um, I'm going to briefly touch on sea turtles. Um, so I said earlier all of our turtles are at max size. This is a loggerhead sea turtle. They um, get their name from their head. And this is the commonly, um, the common species that nests on South Carolina's beaches. And their season is right around the corner. It's starting May 1st. So I just like to show people the size so they can see. Um, sometimes people ask us if our diamondback terrapins are sea turtles. Um, so I always like to show them this <laughs> because they are much larger. Um, and I always like to point this out so you can see. So this head is pretty large. Right here, that's where the brain is. So turtles are not very smart. They're purely instinct. We've had a question come in. Is it legal to own a wild turtle? Um, they typically frown upon that. Um, I know diamondback terrapins are um, somewhat protected because they are a vulnerable species. Um, box turtles are also vulnerable um, because people take them out of the wild. So if you do want a turtle, I suggest going to a pet store. Um, or even if there's some sort of breeder, go about it that way rather than taking it from the wild. All right. Any other questions? We did have a question a while back. Um, how many different animals do we have here at the center at Edisto Beach State Park? Um, we have multiple fish. Um, we have multiple invertebrates we have one two three snakes we have a alligator and then we have four turtles all right so 
we want to go over here and show this uh, exhibit that we have about sea turtles? Uh, outside? The one right over here. Um, oh, showing yeah. the nest. Our sea turtle specialist, Leah, uh, she does this every year. Um, up and down the coast, uh, they, when sea turtle season starts, they take one egg from the nest, um, empty the contents because the eggshell is maternal DNA, and they send it off. And they're able to see um, how many times they nest. So this green one nested 13 times throughout since 2012. So they usually nest every other year um, and they nest every two and a half weeks or so. Um, so when they start the season, they start off with about 500 eggs and then they nest every two to two weeks or so. Um, so each clutch could have about 120 eggs. Um, so these are just some turtles um, throughout. This one really liked our beach, um, but then went to Seabrook, North Island. Um, this one, uh, the blue, that's a new sea turtle, um, new mom, so she's probably about 30 years old. So with this DNA, they have found that there's not only nesting moms, there's nesting grandmothers, there's nesting daughters, so a nesting grandmother um, could be at least 90, so that's pretty cool. So when we're looking at this right here, going by the colorations on some of this, that's also coordinated here on this map, showing yes. the yellow and orange and green? Mm hmm Okay. So this green one, she nested on Edisto, but nested on Hilton Head, Tybee, Port Royal, Charleston, Cape Romain. So all up and down the coast. So they have multiple locations where they'll go and... Yep. Um, typically they try and stay in the same area. So sometimes there's turtles that they stay strictly on Edisto. So that means that they were most likely born there. But then sometimes they get a little confused and they go everywhere. We do have a question about how many turtles survive after they hatch. Um, the survival rate with our efforts is one in a thousand. Reach it to adulthood. And then the other question that came in is just to clarify with this one turtle, when you go by the different green mm -hmm. pins up and down, that was all in just one year in the same year, correct? No, that's multiple years. So she nested in 2012, 2014, 2016, and 2018. So she's been pretty busy and it's every two years or so. So they don't nest, nest every year. Last season we had about, uh, we had 351 nests and that was a record year. So hopefully it's still going to be pretty high this year, but typically not every, it'll be, if there's a high year, the next year will be significantly lower. We also had a question come in, um, how many babies or eggs are in uh, any given nest? Um, it ranges. Sometimes it's 75 and it could be uh, 120 it could be 150 um, it really just it ranges all right we're going to step over here and just take a look at one of our exhibits that we have set up in place have an exhibit here at the elc where we show it kind of gives you an idea of how these nests are laid how deep down they'll be Gives you an idea about for them when they come to hatch how far they got to crawl out and sam can you just explain to us a little bit more like with this the purpose and reasoning behind this exhibit over here mm -hmm. um so they nest on uh the atlantic coast um loggerheads do um so when they they nest the there's a lot of um predation. So we have a little raccoon that's waiting to go eat the eggs. Um, and then the dune, they typically nest in that softer sand. And then the, the every morning, um, 
our sea turtle group will go out and they'll patrol the beach looking for signs of nesting. So there's usually a big track um, about, probably about this wide, um, going up the beach. And then there's usually a body pit of where the nest actually is. And then there's the returning, um, going out to sea. So they mark it, um, well, they'll take one egg for the DNA and then they'll mark it. Um, and then the, the lights in the houses, that's another problem. So when the, when the babies hatch or when the hatchlings come out of the nest, they're instinctually supposed to go to the brightest point in the horizon. Um, even if there's not a full moon, they can still see the moon's reflection off of the ocean if there's lights on um, with the, the houses or anything like that. They'll go to that because that will be the brightest point. We've had a question come in. What's the best time to visit and see a sea turtle nest hatching? Um, to see a sea turtle nest hatching, that's pretty tough. Um, so the season starts from May 1st and goes until Octo Octo uh, October. Um, and they'll nest from May until beginning of August. Um, and it takes 45 to 60 days of incubation. Um, so they'll usually nest in May, we'll start hatching in July, um, June or July. Um, so June and July is when we do our sea turtle night walk. So you might be able to see um, sea turtles coming up and nesting, and then you might be able to see nests hatching. But they usually hatch anywhere from like 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, so it's pretty tough to pinpoint it, but um, June, July and August would probably be the best. All right. And we've had some questions come in. Um, as far as with these eggs right here, these are, of course, just exhibit um, right here. These are not real eggs. Mm -hmm. And we've also had another question come in. Sam, how long can a turtle go until it gets tired? Um, it depends on the situation. Uh, so if it's a high stress situation, situation, not very long. Um, if it, they feel threatened, then they're using up their oxygen faster. Um, if it's not a high stress situation, sea turtles, they can swim thousands of miles. Uh, diamondback terrapins, they spend all of their life out in the water unless they're basking or they're should go in somewhere. <laughs> it sounds um, like it. Uh, the, either they're basking or they're laying a nest. Um, they don't use a whole lot of energy, so it really just depends on the situation. I've had a question come in. Do raccoons dig up the nest? Uh, if it's not marked yet, um, it's possible. So, um, they're one of the, the prime predators on our beach. They'll, um, they're extremely smart, way too smart for their own good. Um, but if it's not marked, they can easily dig it up. Um, so in the morning, it might already be predated. Uh, sometimes they do try and get it even after it's marked. And we have another question. How long would they go without any food? Um, since they're reptiles, they can go um, pretty long without food. Uh, the species that we have here in the wild, they would hibernate um, pretty much from probably November, December until March, until it starts warming up. Uh, and even alligators, they don't eat if it's below 75 degrees. So pretty much from November to March, they're not eating anyway. Um, but during the summer, uh, they usually eat probably multiple times a week, maybe less, depending on the food source. And one question I've seen I've come in that, that I'm loving right now is, do the exhibits come to life after midnight and then <laughs> deanimate before opening each day? I Should we tell them the truth? or? Um, they do not come to life, but since I'm here pretty much by myself, I think that they do. I hear some strange noises here. <laughs> so um, 
Maybe. <laughs> I'm usually not here after midnight, though. So, in other words, they'll just have to come over here once we reopen and just kind of check it out for themselves. Yes. All right. Another question has come in. How do the baby turtles dig up from underneath the sand? So, um, when this, the mother will kind of cover this up and there's an air pocket. Um, so, they'll be able to pretty much they'll kind of wiggle around and everybody hatches pretty much at the same time and that's what's called a boil but it's pretty much strength in numbers so they use there's say 120 eggs hatching they kind of use each other to get out of the nest okay how deep are these usually um usually about three feet um, I've done some inventories where I'm laying on my stomach and my entire arm is in the nest. Entire arm. Mm. <laughs> All right. I'm good? Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you weren't able to watch this now, it will be posted. And we're trying to get these on our YouTube channel. So if you don't have Facebook, you can watch it on YouTube, hopefully. Um, and tune in for the next Facebook Live at uh, any state park. Um, I'm not sure which one's next. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And remember, I'm Sam at Edisto Beach State Park at the Environmental Learning Center. So when all of the parks reopen, please come out and check us out. Um, when we've had some questions, uh, people just want to clarify, as of right now, if things hold steady, when would we be reopening? We would be reopening May 1st. Yes, May 1st. All right. And I want to just thank everybody once again for tuning in, but also please um, continue your efforts with uh, washing your hands frequently and often. Um, and please just make sure, you know, you're practicing social distancing. Um, we really appreciate everybody's support with this whole endeavor, um, and we just want to make sure that everybody is staying safe and practicing social distancing, and we look forward to when we reopen to have our folks come back out and enjoy the wonderful exhibits we have here at the Environmental Learning Center.